I divorced the woman I had loved for 10 years. In the seventh year of secretly loving Victoria, she said to me, let's get married. In the third year of marriage, I said to her, let's get divorced. Chapter 1. In the tenth year of loving Victoria, I asked her for a divorce. It all started when she didn't come home after work. I drove to her office to find her, only to see her standing outside the building with a man. I recognized him immediately, it was her ex-boyfriend, who had been entangled with Victoria for five years. They stood on the steps, the man looking sharp in a suit, and Victoria, with her hair in soft waves, looked as if she was nestling up to him. Even though they weren't holding hands or embracing, there was an undeniable closeness between them, one that no outsider could breach. I glanced at our chat history. The last message was for me asking, are you coming home for dinner tonight? She hadn't replied. She hadn't been replying to me much lately. Whenever I asked, she always said she was busy. But it turns out, she wasn't so busy when talking to another man. I didn't approach them. I just watched from a distance. Victoria's smile looked unfamiliar. It hit me then, she hadn't smiled at me in a long time. We were supposed to be the closest of partners. Yet every time she came home, she wore a cold expression. I had thought it was because she was too exhausted from work, but now I realized I simply wasn't the one who could make her smile. She glanced around casually, and her expression froze when she saw me. She said something to the man, and his smile faded. He waved to her, glanced at me, and then turned to leave. Victoria walked over, opened the car door, and sat in the passenger seat with a frown. What are you doing here? I calmly replied. I came to pick you up from work. Didn't you say you wouldn't let Andrew into your company? Victoria's frown deepened. Andrew graduated from Yale and worked at Morgan Stanley on Wall Street for several years. Where can we find such talent? Why wouldn't I let him in? She sounded impatient. Can you stop thinking about nothing but romance all day? Look at what he's accomplished now. Several companies are fighting to hire him. If it weren't for me, he might not even have considered joining us. Her disdain was obvious. I stared at the night lights mingling with the traffic in the distance and said nothing more. When we got home, Victoria didn't speak to me either. She went into the study and slammed the door shut. She was angry. What she didn't realize was that she only got angry to cover up her guilt. And perhaps I was the only one who understood her so well after 10 years by her side. But sometimes I hated myself for understanding her so well. Ignorance would have been less painful than this clarity. Neither of us spoke first. I didn't start a big fight like usual. We just had a cold war on opposite sides of the door. After a while, the study door was violently pushed open, and Victoria, with a dark expression, said, What do you want? I'm telling you, there's no way I'm firing Andrew. Either you accept it, or we get divorced. People can live without each other. Samuel, let me tell you, I interrupted her softly. No need to fire him. Let's get divorced. Victoria paused. What did you say? She seemed to laugh out of anger, her eyes filled with mockery. Samuel, I'm not joking with you, you'd better think this through, there's no negotiating about Andrew, so don't come back begging me later, she sneered, like a dog, Victoria had always been so reckless with her words, the first time she fought with me like this, I locked myself in my room for an entire day, feeling like my heart was breaking, but now, all I felt was a slight pain in my chest, quickly replaced by numbness, I didn't argue with her, I took out the divorce papers from my bag and placed them on the table, I've already signed the agreement, the house is yours, the cash and car are mine. It's pretty much a 50-50 split. If you have any other requests, we can discuss them. Victoria was silent. She looked at me in disbelief. And then that disbelief turned into anger. She grabbed the papers, scanned them, and coldly said, Fine, you've got guts. Samuel, once I sign, there's no going back. Think it over. I handed her the pen. Victoria's face turned dark. She snatched the pen from my hand and swiftly signed her name. Then threw the papers at my face. Tomorrow tomorrow we're getting divorced. She stormed out, shouting, whoever doesn't show up is a coward. I nodded, nine o'clock tomorrow morning, I've already made the appointment. She froze, I said nothing more and closed the door to the guest room. I could hear things being smashed outside as I lit a cigarette, the scent of tobacco spread in the white mist as I took a deep drag. How did we end up here? I had wanted happiness, after all. Chapter 2, Victoria and I had a whirlwind marriage, for her. This relationship came out of nowhere, but for me. It was the culmination of seven years of secretly loving her. At that time, she had just broken up with Andrew. When they were together, I never interfered, but after their breakup, I started attending gatherings where she would be present. During one such reunion, she drank a lot. Her eyes eventually reddened. I knew it was because of Andrew. Back then, Andrew had just received his acceptance letter from Yale University, while Victoria had taken over her father's company and was planning to develop her career in China. They couldn't convince each other to compromise. And after five years of being in love, the couple parted ways in the wake of a massive argument. As we were leaving, a few friends, knowing that I had always liked her, nudged and winked, urging me to take her home. 
I had no choice. I hailed a cab, supporting her as I half carried, half helped her into her apartment. Victoria leaned on me, her warm, soft body pressed against mine, making my thoughts race. My hands didn't know where to rest as I fumbled to find the light switch. In the darkness, she drunkenly murmured in my ear, M.M. Sam. Her words were so slurred I couldn't make them out clearly. I thought she was calling my name. Her breath, heavy with the scent of alcohol, lingered near my ear. My entire body stiffened, and I couldn't control my reaction. When she leaned in to kiss me, I didn't pull away. The next morning, Victoria was calm, as if nothing had happened the night before. I could only awkwardly leave. She didn't contact me again. I stayed at home for several days. And finally, I gathered the courage to send Victoria a WeChat message. Are you free today? How about a movie? Victoria didn't reply all day. Just as I was about to lose all hope, she suddenly called me, on the phone. Her voice was emotionless. I'm pregnant. Samuel, let's get married. I still remember exactly how I felt when I heard those words. For the first time, I understood how fitting the phrase, my heart was bursting with joy, could be. It was like fireworks exploded inside me, leaving me more dizzy than if I had won the lottery. I suppressed my overwhelming happiness, trying to sound calm as I asked her, do you like me? I don't want you to be with me just because of the child. Victoria was silent for a long time, avoiding my question. Don't overthink it. Come see me later. After hanging up, I clenched my fists tightly, my mind filled with images of 17-year-old Victoria, wearing her high school uniform. Love, once it begins, becomes impossible to stop. I don't know when exactly I fell in love with Victoria. Was it when she smiled at me during our late night study sessions, her eyes crinkling, or when she placed a milk tea on my desk and said, it's on me. I just knew I had loved her for a long, long time. It was like walking alone in the dark and finally seeing the light of dawn. Even though her parents didn't like me, demanded a very high dowry, and made things difficult for me during the wedding. Even though the child didn't make it in the end. Back then, I truly believed I was the happiest person in the world. Being with her made all the bitterness turn sweet. How foolish. In the darkness, a bitter smile spread across my lips. Who would have thought that in just three short years, the dream would shatter? Chapter 3 Early the next morning, I was already packed and ready, but Victoria had yet to get up. I knocked on the door for a while before she finally opened it, wearing a burgundy camisole nightgown, barefoot, and with a face full of impatience. Are you in such a hurry? I glanced at my watch. If we're late, we'll have to reschedule. I paused. You've been talking about divorce for so long. Now that it's finally happening, aren't you happy? I'm thrilled, she said through gritted teeth with a smile. Of course, I'm happy. Andrew is back. After all, at least you're smart enough to know when to step aside. I nodded. Let's go. Then. We didn't speak on the way. Victoria kept a cold expression, but I had grown used to it. I don't remember exactly when we stopped talking so much. At first, I loved talking to her. After loving her for so many years, I had saved up countless things to share with her. When I saw a dog on the street, heard a nice song, or watched a great movie, I would send it to her, but she rarely replied. Usually, it wasn't until much later, when she needed something from me that she would reluctantly respond with a simple hmm. I couldn't fool myself into thinking she was just naturally quiet, because I had seen Andrew's social media posts, where Victoria seemed like a completely different person, sweet, lively, and quick to reply to everything he said. Over time, I just stopped sending messages. When we arrived at the civil affairs office, the clerk tried to mediate between us for a long time. Are you sure your relationship has broken down? Victoria was about to speak, but I smiled and answered, no, we had a whirlwind marriage so there was never a strong foundation. Now it feels like we're not compatible, so we can't continue. Victoria glanced at me, her expression complicated. The clerk tried to persuade us for a while, but I politely blocked all her attempts. Finally, she sighed and said, you have a one-month cooling-off period. Think about it during that time. You two make such a good-looking couple. Young people are always so impulsive. Go home and think about the good things in each other. I thought about it. Victoria is beautiful. She was the most popular girl in our high school. Her family background is also great. Her parents run a company, so money was never an issue. While we were still taking buses in college, she was already driving around with Andrew in a sports car. Her personality is great too. She has a large circle of friends and never lets things get awkward. She's a wonderful person, just not to me. As we left the civil affairs office, the midday sun was so bright that I had to close my eyes. Victoria thought I was crying and finally showed a triumphant smirk, regretting it now. Too late. Samuel. She stood in front of me. Even though she was a head shorter, she managed to look down at me with an air of superiority. I never go back to what I've left behind. I said nothing and drove her home. Once home, Victoria lay on the sofa, as usual, ordering me around. Get me some water. I ignored her and came out of the bedroom with my suitcase. Where are you going? 
She frowned. I found a new place. I'm moving out today. I paused and continued. I left everything you bought for me in the bedroom closet. Like I care. Victoria suddenly erupted in anger. I forced a smile. We're getting divorced. Let's say goodbye properly. Take care of yourself from now on. Drink less. Your stomach isn't good. Who do you think you are? Mind your own business. She suddenly stood up, grabbed my suitcase, and violently shoved it out the door, kicking it along the way. If you're leaving, then get out. Her brows furrowed, and her eyes were filled with pent-up anger. I looked at the suitcase on the ground, stunned for a moment. Then I said nothing more, walked over, picked up the suitcase, and entered the elevator without looking back at her. The burning gaze behind me felt like it was trying to bore a hole through my back. But in the end, the closing elevator doors completely severed it. Chapter 4 I didn't take the house because I didn't want to have any more ties to Victoria. I didn't want to see her things, smell her scent, or think about anything related to her. In truth, I had been considering divorce for a long time. I always knew Victoria didn't love me. I just thought that after so many years, even if her heart was made of stone, it would eventually soften. But after all these years, she still didn't love me, and I had used up all my warmth. I finally realized that some people are truly irreplaceable, no matter how hard I tried. I would never see the same smile she had when she was with Andrew. I moved into a place I had rented earlier, and before I even had time to settle in, Victoria's mom called. Sam, did you get Victoria her stomach medicine? I heard her stomach hasn't been doing well lately. Let me tell you, Sam, I was against Victoria marrying you from the start. Don't be offended, but what makes you think you deserve our Victoria? Even the house you live in is ours. You're nothing compared to her ex, Andrew. The only reason I allowed you in was because you treated Victoria decently. But look at you too, no kids after all these years. I hate to say it, but is there something wrong with you? Victoria can't go without children, you know. If there's something wrong, you'd better speak up now. She's still young, but don't waste her time. I clenched my phone. Victoria's family had money, and her mother had always looked down on my family. When we first got married, my parents had to smile and flatter her, but all they got in return was cold indifference. Over the years, she had never liked me, no matter how much I tried to please her. This wasn't the first time she had said things like this. Every time we met, every time she called, she would repeat how I had climbed my way up to Victoria and how her family had begrudgingly accepted me. Victoria never defended me. She just told me, isn't my mom right? She would say that her mother had already sacrificed a lot to accept me, so I always held back, but this time, I didn't need to hold back anymore. With a blank expression, I said, Auntie, we've already divorced. I'm not obligated to buy her medicine anymore, and by the way, you didn't raise me, so you have no right to lecture me. If you can't stand me, I suggest you gouge out your eyes so you don't have to see me again. Without waiting for a response, I hung up and immediately blocked her number. After thinking for a moment, I left Victoria's family group chat and deleted and blocked all of her relatives' contacts, including hers. After doing all this, I let out a long sigh and lay down on the bed. Divorce wasn't as painful as I had imagined. Victoria always liked to use the threat of divorce to control me, as if she knew I wouldn't leave her, taking advantage of my love to hurt me without restraint. And as she expected, the first time she threatened me with divorce, I was terrified. She was right, I groveled at her feet like a dog, saying I was wrong, promising to change. As long as she didn't leave me, I would do anything. I covered my eyes with my palms, feeling a rush of heat and dampness. But even pain has its limits. Again and again, the repeated pain gradually numbed me. The chains that once tore through me, leaving rotting wounds, were now gone. And finally, all that was left was a sense of release. Chapter 5 Victoria didn't reach out to me again. It was as if she had completely disappeared from my life. Two weeks later, a classmate suddenly contacted me, asking if I was going to the reunion tomorrow night. I initially wanted to decline, I really didn't want to see Victoria again, but then I thought, I wasn't the one who did anything wrong, I didn't need to avoid her, so, I agreed to go. At the reunion, I was chatting with some others when the door suddenly opened, Victoria stepped in, she was wearing a form-fitting white satin dress, the shimmering fabric accentuating her curves, under the light, her eyes sparkled, making her seem almost as if she were glowing, following behind her was Andrew, dressed in a tailored suit, as soon as they entered. The room erupted in cheers. Hey, Andrew and the school bell are back together. I knew you two wouldn't stay apart. You made such a scene back then. Come on, sit over here. Exactly. I remember when Andrew went abroad. Victoria drank so much she nearly ended up in the hospital. She must have been waiting for him all these years. Right. When I married Victoria, she said she didn't like making a big deal out of things. So we didn't have a wedding. After we got married, she never posted anything about me on her social media and she even kept her distance from me when we went out with friends. It's funny, after three years of marriage, only a few close friends knew we were together. 
Victoria's gaze swept through the crowd until it landed on me, her eyes carrying a hint of mockery as she smirked. I didn't look at her and turned to continue my conversation with the person next to me. Her face darkened, and she sat down with Andrew. So, Andrew, why are you back? I heard you were doing great abroad. Are you planning to return and contribute to the motherland? Someone joked. Andrew's lips curled into a slightly smug smile. I'm getting older. It's time to start thinking about settling down. My family's been pushing me. Too. He didn't mention any names. But everyone laughed. Yeah. Victoria's been waiting for you all these years. Now that you're back. It looks like good things are on the horizon. Andrew didn't say anything. But his smile confirmed it. Hey. Victoria. You're really loyal. Huh. But Andrew's a successful man now. And he's handsome too. You two make a perfect match. But speaking of handsome. I think Samuel's pretty good looking too. Back in the day. There was always a debate in our class over who was more of a heartthrob, Samuel or Andrew. Just as I was about to say something, Victoria sneered. What good is being handsome? Some people have nothing but romance on their minds all day, becoming so stupid as house husbands that no one could love them. My face went pale. I knew she was talking about me. When she was busy with her startup, I knew that if I pursued a career too, we'd hardly ever see each other. So, for her, I turned down all job offers and stayed home to take care of her. Everyone fell silent, and then a classmate tried to smooth things over. You can't say that. Back then, Samuel got offers from several big companies. His university project earned him millions. I remember one company offered him a 3 million yuan annual salary. But why didn't you go for it? He asked curiously. Did you get married? Victoria froze and turned to look at me. I lowered my gaze and calmly replied. Yes, I married a heartless woman. I turned down all those opportunities to take care of her. But trash is trash, no matter how much you give. It's never enough. Fortunately, I got out in time. A male classmate nearby nodded in agreement. Yeah, some women are like that. They want a servant when they get married. Then complain when the man doesn't make money and call him a loser. They want all the good stuff for themselves. Ugh, that kind of trash deserves to end up alone. The topic shifted, and the conversation turned to everyone's relationships and marriages, with people warning against being too romantic, lest they end up with a scumbag. I had always been deferential to Victoria. This was the first time I had ever criticized her, and she stared at me, seemingly a bit bewildered. You. She tried to say something, but her voice was lost in the noisy chatter. When the reunion ended, I got into my car, ready to leave. As I started the engine, someone knocked on my window. It was one of Victoria's close friends, looking a bit embarrassed. Sam, Victoria's stomach problem has flared up again. Could you take her home? Of the people here, only a few knew about our marriage. I frowned. Where's Andrew? She hesitated. He offered. But Victoria didn't want him to. Victoria always listens to you. Could you? I glanced to the side. Not far away. Victoria stood at the hotel entrance. Bathed in the orange glow of the lights. Her gaze drifted toward me but quickly turned away as if burned when our eyes met. Andrew was next to her. Saying something while trying to drape his jacket over her shoulders. She seemed distracted. Frowning as she waved him off. We're divorced. I said. Turning my attention back to her friend. Sorry. But you'll have to find someone else. Sam. She tried to say more, but I nodded to her and drove off. In the rearview mirror, I saw Victoria watching me, slightly hunched over, her face pale. I didn't look back at her as I drove away. Everyone around Victoria knew how much I cared for her. Her stomach problems started when Andrew left, and she drank excessively, causing long-term damage. Over the past three years, I went from being completely clueless about household chores to becoming the perfect husband, cooking soups and meals in countless variations just to take better care of her. I bought all her medication portioning it out into daily doses and tucking them into her clothes, reminding her to take them on time, when she forgot to bring her medicine on a business trip and woke up in the middle of the night with stomach pains. I braved the freezing winter and took the earliest flight to bring it to her, but by the time I arrived, she had already fallen asleep, so I waited outside her door for hours until I was covered in snow. When Victoria finally woke up and opened the door, she simply frowned in annoyance and said, give me the medicine and leave. It was on the way back from that trip that I had a car accident and ended up in the hospital for half a month. She never visited me, not even once. Memories gnawed at my heart like insects, not enough to be excruciating, but sharp enough to be impossible to ignore. Sometimes, I didn't understand myself. I wasn't normally this kind of person, so why had I become so pathetically humble when it came to her? But love has a way of defying logic, easily demolishing all of a person's principles. One smile from her, and all my boundaries would crumble leaving me defenseless, cut into a thousand pieces by him. My love had been completely exhausted. The Samuel who once had eyes only for her had been worn down to nothing by her own hands. Chapter 6 The next morning, just as I was about to leave, I received a call from my parents. They told me that both they and Victoria's parents were at our place and asked me to come home for a talk. 
I had anticipated this day would come, divorce isn't a small matter, it involves two families, even though I didn't want to go back, it was something that had to be resolved eventually, in just two short weeks of being away, the house that once felt like home now seemed unfamiliar to me, as soon as I walked in, I felt a sense of suffocation, both sets of parents were sitting on the sofa, and Victoria was off to the side, quietly fiddling with her nails, her head down, not saying a word, perhaps sensing that I was serious this time, Victoria's mother didn't immediately start berating me, instead, she frowned and said, Sam, I know young people can be impulsive, but divorce is no small thing, how can you just talk about divorce so casually? I chuckled, Auntie, you should ask your daughter that, she's the one who brought up divorce, if I remember correctly, this is the thirteenth time Victoria has mentioned wanting a divorce, since she's so determined, I'm just giving her what she wants, Victoria's mother was taken aback and forced a smile, Victoria is just being childish, she's not mature yet, oh, really, I replied coolly, she's older than me by half a year, is there something wrong with her development, she's twenty-five years old, old enough to have children, yet her brain isn't mature, Victoria's mother was embarrassed and fell silent, Victoria's father cleared his throat, Sam, Victoria is young and doesn't understand, as her parents, we apologize on her behalf, but when a marriage has problems, it's never just one person's fault, it takes two to tango, uncle, if I slap you, would you say it's my hand's fault? Now that we were divorced, I no longer needed to hold back, I could say whatever I wanted, I walked over to Victoria and said in a low voice, Victoria, stop pretending, why don't you tell your parents what really went wrong in our marriage? Your ex-boyfriend came back, and you said you didn't like a man like me who only knows about love and spends all his time at home taking care of you. But wasn't it your family who said you were in poor health and asked me to quit my job to take care of you? Four years, I cooked and cleaned, made you three meals a day, and because of your stomach problems, I, someone who loves spicy food, never made anything spicy at home again. Victoria, tell me honestly, was that my fault? Victoria remained silent. Her mother couldn't help but interject. You can't just blame her. After all these years, you two still haven't had a child. We weren't happy about Victoria getting pregnant before marriage. And then you couldn't even keep the baby. Who knows if there's something wrong with you. I suddenly turned around, raising my voice. Yes, she got pregnant. But getting pregnant isn't just up to me. If Victoria didn't want to, could I have forced her? Why is everything my fault? Didn't I take responsibility for her afterward? You say the baby wasn't born. Why don't you ask your daughter why? She secretly had an abortion and didn't tell me. She never wanted the child in the first place. So, whose fault is that? Mine. I hadn't planned on getting angry, but the emotions I had suppressed for so long burst out uncontrollably. Was it wrong to give everything to someone? Why did loving someone turn into a mistake? In the end, I nearly broke down, shouting at her. Victoria, tell me, what exactly did I do wrong? My mother stood up, shocked. You told us the baby wasn't healthy and that's why you had the abortion. I looked down, bitterly smiling. I was too stupid to protect her from your anger. My mother's eyes reddened and she trembled as she questioned Victoria. Victoria, our family has treated you well over the years. We've truly seen you as a daughter. Your mother demanded a dowry of 880,000 yuan. You didn't want a wedding. And your family has always looked down on Samuel. We never said a word. We knew Samuel loved you. And we just wanted you two to be happy. Is this how you repay him? The color drained from Victoria's face. I'm sorry, mom. Don't call me mom. I'm not your mother. My mom shouted, her eyes blazing with anger. My father's expression was equally grim as he looked down, clenching his fists. Victoria, I don't know why you called both our parents here, but I haven't done anything to wrong you in all these years. I don't want this to get ugly. Let's part on good terms. I said wearily. Victoria raised her head, her emotions a mix of regret and something else, her lips trembling as she finally spoke softly. You did nothing wrong. If we're here, it's all my fault. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I just, Samuel, please give me a chance to make it up to you. I won't be like this anymore. A hint of sarcasm appeared in my eyes. Of course you didn't mean to, you just enjoyed the good things I gave you while despising me. Victoria, sometimes I really can't understand you. You never gave me anything, never had the right to make decisions for me. You just took advantage of my love to keep taking from me. But even if I dug out my heart for you, you'd only scorn it for being bloody. I loved you, so I treated you well, but you used my love to hurt me again and again. All while looking down on me, I leaned closer and whispered, What kind of person are you? Victoria, what gives you the right? Victoria's eyes flickered, her face pale as if she had been through a serious illness, facing my questioning. She couldn't say a word, as if my words had pierced her heart, leaving her at a loss for the first time. Her once strong and proud back seemed to bend under the weight. Andrew came back, and you told me you wouldn't let him into the company, but then you kept him there. Victoria, 
you were unfaithful in our marriage, broke your promises, and then blamed everything on me, saying I was obsessed with love, isn't this perfect, I'm giving you what you wanted, Victoria looked up quickly, there's nothing between Andrew and me, we're just colleagues, I sneered, can you honestly say you didn't have any lingering feelings, do regular colleagues need to have meals together every day, constantly texting each other, Victoria, do you think everyone else is stupid, happy to be fooled by you, Victoria opened her mouth but couldn't find the words, I stood up and said coldly, I've said what I needed to say, I hope you don't bother me again, just as I was about to step out the door, Victoria called out to me, her voice trembled, as if someone who had always lived in a bubble was finally seeing herself clearly, Samuel, if I'm willing to change, do we, do we still have a chance, I turned back to look at her, and there was a trace of fear in her eyes, Victoria had always been proud and aloof in front of me, always looking down on everything, in this relationship, she had always been the one in control, I had never seen her look so frightened, it's too late, I said quietly, then closed the door behind me, chapter 7, after leaving Victoria, I started sending out resumes and looking for work, fortunately, it hadn't been too long since I graduated, and my previous projects were impressive enough that many companies were eager to hire me, in her eyes, I was probably worthless, not even worthy of standing in Andrew's shadow, because of that, throughout our relationship, I constantly doubted myself, living in a state of pain, questioning whether I was really as terrible as she made me feel, but now I realized she couldn't define me, I was good enough, that evening, I decided to treat myself and cooked a feast, rewarding myself for moving forward, the cooling off period would end in a few days, and I'd finally be free from this relationship, but a phone call interrupted my good mood, Andrew's voice was somewhat distorted over the line, let's talk, I looked at the chopsticks in my hand, feeling a bit irritated, there's nothing for us to talk about, you wouldn't want me to keep bothering you, right, it's better to clear things up, although he was the one seeking me out, his tone was still arrogant, I hung up the phone without hesitation, the next day, when he called again, his tone had softened considerably, I just want to discuss something with you, it'll only take an hour, I won't waste your time, I didn't want to meet him, but I also didn't want him pestering me daily, so I agreed to meet for a brief conversation, Andrew got straight to the point, I don't want you to keep in contact with Victoria, since you've broken up, you should make a clean break and not keep dragging things out, I looked at him, he was wearing a custom made Italian suit, his hair neatly combed back, looking both handsome and sharp, no wonder Victoria had been so infatuated with him for so many years, you know I was with her first, we were doing well together, if you hadn't interfered, we might have already gotten back together, now that you're divorced, I don't want you interfering with her anymore, I sneered, I blocked her a long time ago, so where's the dragging things out? Andrew didn't believe me. Victoria has been out of sorts lately. If it's not you who's been contacting her, who else could it be? You people are really good at telling yourself stories. I laughed and spoke sharply. Interfered. How did I interfere? You two broke up before we got together. How does that count as interference? If Victoria didn't want to marry me, do you think I could have forced her with a knife to her throat? Why don't you go ask her? As for me contacting her, I set down my coffee and looked at Andrew with disdain. Don't worry, if you're still into her, then keep her close. I'm not interested in that woman anymore. Andrew tried to say something more, but his eyes suddenly widened. Victoria hurried over from behind me, grabbed his arm, and angrily said, Are you out of your mind? Who told you to come find him? Andrew's face darkened. What's wrong with me talking to him? You two are getting divorced. Why are you still thinking about him? Didn't you tell me before that he's boring? That you were tired of him because he was always hovering around you? Victoria froze, turning to look at me. I crossed my arms, unfazed, I'd heard these words too many times by now, they no longer had the power to hurt me, Victoria gritted her teeth, you're crazy, whatever happens between him and me is none of your business, we're not even legally divorced yet, Andrew looked at her in shock, but we were together first, and you said you couldn't forget about me, didn't you, Victoria, don't you remember how we, that was in the past, Victoria said coldly, I have a husband, you and I have nothing to do with each other, she stared at Andrew, emphasizing each word, I'm warning you, don't come looking for him again, or I won't be so polite. Andrew's expression grew ugly, and he stared at Victoria for a long time before letting out a bitter laugh. Victoria, you win. He shook off her hand, walking out of the cafe in a hurry, looking somewhat defeated. Victoria pulled me out of the cafe. After a moment of silence, she spoke. I'm sorry, you're right, I initially did want to get back with Andrew. I was too young then, and being dumped felt too unfair. So when he came back, I wanted to show him how successful I'd become, to make him regret it, I mistook that obsession for love, she rubbed her face and said quietly, now I realize I haven't loved him for a long time, at some point, it had started snowing, snowflakes landed on Victoria's shoulders, 
but she didn't seem to notice, only offering a bitter smile. After you said what you did that day, I went home and thought for a long time. I realized I'm really a terrible person. I thought you couldn't live without me, that you were dependent on me, so I hurt you recklessly, even looked down on you. But now I see that you were just someone who loved with all your heart, openly and fully. Your love was noble. I was the one who was the lowest. The distant streetlights flickered on, and a snowflake fell on her eyelashes, quickly melting into a glistening drop. Her voice lowered. After you left, no one was there to make soup for me when my stomach hurt. I tried to find the medicine, but I couldn't. I tried to buy it, but I didn't even know what it was called. Now I realize, it wasn't you who couldn't live without me, it was me who couldn't live without you. I've been lost every day since you left. I don't like this feeling of confusion, but I don't know what to do. The bed is cold. So cold it scares me. Victoria covered her face, laughing bitterly. Her voice hoarse. It turns out, I had already fallen in love with you. She had said so much that I was surprised. When we were together, Victoria had always been stingy with her words, leaving me to play out a one-man show. Turns out, she could talk this much, but it was a bit too late. I didn't want to hear it anymore. I caught a snowflake in my hand. Feeling its coldness as it melted in my palm. Victoria, you don't love me. You're just not used to the person who was always around you suddenly being gone. You're just afraid no one will love you as much as I did. I turned to leave, but Victoria grabbed my arm. She bent slightly, her expression almost humble. Samuel, I'm begging you. Victoria, who's never begged anyone in her life, is begging you. Please, give me one more chance. Okay. I was wrong before. I didn't realize how important you were to me. I promise I'll. I pulled her hand away, cutting her off. Victoria, no one waits forever. I'm not your parents, who only have one daughter. But for me, there are plenty of women. Victoria stood frozen for a long time, shouting after me, her voice filled with desperation. Samuel, in the swirling snow, she stood there, her eyes gradually reddening. I won't get divorced. I turned back and said calmly, then I'll file for divorce. Victoria, you're making a fool of yourself. Don't act like a dog. It was as if someone had suddenly choked her. She stared at me, her expression filled with pain and regret. A single tear fell from her eye, an unexpected drop. This was what she had said to me when we first talked about divorce, and now I was returning her words in kind. I finally understood her. When you don't love someone, hurtful words can slip out so easily. She finally regretted it, but the right answer had come too late. It had already become the wrong one. Chapter 8 In the end, Andrew didn't manage to secure his position at Victoria's company. It was discovered that he had faked his resume, he had only interviewed on Wall Street but never actually made it through. His supposed experience at Morgan Stanley was also fabricated. The truth came out after he took on a project and completely botched it, failing to even get the decimals right in the proposal, leading to massive losses for the company. The deputy manager sensed something was off and decided to run a background check on Andrew, only to discover that he had landed the job solely through Victoria's connections. By boasting about himself, the scandal blew up and Andrew was forced to leave the company in disgrace. His reputation was ruined, and he couldn't find work in the industry anymore. He had no choice but to return to his hometown. Meanwhile, it seemed like the tides had turned for me. I was doing well in my career, and a headhunter from a reputable company in the industry reached out, offering me a vice president position. I planned to work for a few years, gain more experience, and then start my own business. While things were going well for me, Victoria wasn't doing so well. She ended up in the hospital again after drinking heavily. One of her friends called me. Frantic. Sam. Please. I'm begging you. Victoria has been drinking all night. And nothing we say can stop her. Please. Can you come and see her? I hesitated for a moment. Sorry. I have a meeting today. I can't make it. She's been calling out your name. Crying. Saying she's sorry. Her friend pleaded. She really loves you. How can you be so heartless? I laughed bitterly. When I got into that car accident while bringing her medicine. She was video chatting with Andrew flirting. I called her multiple times, but she wouldn't pick up, and in the end, I had to call 120 to save myself. The doctor said if I had been any later, I might not have made it. The broken ribs nearly punctured my lung, but when Victoria found out, all she said was, okay, I know. It was then that the last bit of love I had for her died. I finally realized that no matter how hard I tried, I could never warm her stone-cold heart. If we're talking about heartlessness, I have to bow down to her. I clenched my fists and hung up the phone without saying another word. The love I once longed for, now that it's returned after so long, feels out of season. I don't want it anymore. Her parents then called me using a different number. Victoria's mother had long lost her former arrogance, and she cried as she begged me. Sam, Victoria really loves you. We were wrong before. Please, can we make it up to you? We'll return the wedding gifts, the dowry, whatever you want. We won't argue. I couldn't help but find it laughable. 
I really don't understand why people are like this. When you're eager to please them, they only see you as cheap, but when they realize you might leave, they suddenly see they have nothing to rely on. Please, just come and see Victoria. Her stomach is bleeding badly, and even when she passed out, she was still calling your name. Her mother's sobs were almost incoherent. In the past, when I heard that Victoria was in pain, I would feel like my heart was being twisted, but now, I only felt annoyance. I hung up the phone, picked up my meeting materials, and headed into the conference room. Where was all this concern before? Even if she drank herself to death now, I wouldn't shed a single tear for her. I thought that with Victoria in such a state, she wouldn't be able to go through with the divorce. But to my surprise, she showed up three days later. She looked pale and haggard, having lost a significant amount of weight. She looked at me as if she wanted to say something but ultimately remained silent. She didn't beg or plead, just signed a new agreement. All the assets went to me, and she left with nothing. Think of it as a way for me to atone. This way, I can have the dignity to try and win you back. She smiled bitterly. I shook my head with a sigh. If you had known it would come to this, why did you act that way before? Once upon a time, I really wanted to be happy with you. I had poured everything I had into loving her, laid bare all that I was before her, just begging for her to notice me. I had tried my best, and though I didn't get the outcome I wanted, I had no regrets. Victoria lowered her head for a long time, then spoke softly. I was too foolish. I could have been happy once, but it's only when I lose something that I realize its value. From now on. She began cautiously. Can I still contact you? As if afraid I'd refuse, she quickly added, I won't bother you often. Just give me a chance to know that you're doing well. There's no need for that. I smiled at her. The past is the past. We both need to move on. But, I added as I gently brushed back a strand of her hair. Next time you meet someone who loves you, don't treat them the way you treated me. Loving someone isn't wrong. The person being loved shouldn't trample on that love. Because love is precious. And you never know when it might disappear. Victoria's expression turned grim. As if my words had become a knife that stabbed her deeply. In the shadowy light. I couldn't see her face clearly. But I could hear the slight tremor of pain in her voice as she choked out. Okay. Goodbye then. I wish you happiness. I waved goodbye to her. Samuel. She suddenly cried out. Breaking down. Samuel. I can't be happy without you. I suppressed the pang in my heart didn't look back, and walked away into the sunlight. When I love, I love fiercely, with all my heart, offering everything I have, but when I no longer love, I never look back. Everything in the past has faded. I won't look back. I'll keep moving forward. This is where it ends. Goodbye forever. Victoria.